Hello students, in this session let us study about assessment of a firm that is what are the rules to be followed to become a firm and let us study how to calculate book profit and tax liability of a firm. Let us start with assessment of a firm under section 184. A firm is assessed as a firm if a partnership is evidenced by an instrument like partnership deed and the individual share of the partners are specified in that instrument. A firm will become a firm if these two conditions are satisfied that is a firm is evidenced by an instrument that is a firm must own its own partnership deed or similar documents and the individual share of the partnership firm that is share of profits of every partner must be specified in that partnership deed. Second point is a certified copy of the instrument of partnership deed should be furnished along with the return of income. Here a copy of partnership deed or similar document must be attached with the return of income uh, to assess a firm under section 184 that is calculation of a tax liability of a firm. Next third point is once the firm is assessed as a firm for any assessment year, it shall be continued to be assessed as such for subsequent assessment years if there is no change in its constitution. If there is a, no any changes in the constitution or in the construction of the firm that is uh, that may be relating to change of partners, addition of partners or uh, retirement of a partner or change in uh, share of profit uh, among the partners like that. If there is no such changes, the firm is continued to be firm from one assessment year to another assessment year. In every year they have to consider that particular firm as a partnership firm only. They cannot consider that firm as body of individual or uh, association of person in one uh, year. Next point is in case of any change a certified copy of the revised partnership deed should be furnished along with the written of income for the relevant previous year. If they change anything in the firm, uh, they have to provide the changed copy of partnership firm to the authority along with the written of income uh, relating to that changes. Next point is, if the firm is fails to comply with the provisions of section 184, it will be assessed as an association of firms. If the firm fails to fulfill any of the above conditions levied by section 184 of Income Tax Act, that firm is considered as association of persons. If it fails to fulfill any one of the conditions, it should not be considered as a firm. So, these are the rules relating to assessment of a firm under section 184. A firm must follow these rules to become a firm and to assess as a firm. Next, let us study about computation of a firm's income. How to compute a firm's income that we are going to study here. While computing firm's income from business or profession, if there is any interest, salary, bonus, commission or remuneration due to or received by a partner to the extent it is uh, inadmissible under section 40b shall be included under section 28. 28 section is relating to income from business or profession. That means any 
income of a partner that is any remuneration like interest salary bonus or any other remuneration due to or received by a partner which is not allowed under section 40 subsection b should be allowed in the head income from business or profession that means any interest salary bonus or commission or any other remuneration must be included in business or professional income if that income is not included or disallowed under section 40 subsection b then what are the expenses which are not allowed under section 40 subsection b and uh, which should be considered under section 28 let us uh, study about that expenses which are not allowed under section 40 subsection b first expense is salary bonus commission or other remuneration paid or payable to any partner who is not a working partner if a partner is not a working partner such salary bonus commission or any other remuneration payable to him is not allowed under section 40 subsection b second one payment of a remuneration which is not authorized by or not in accordance with the partnership deed to any working partner if the payment of a remuneration to any working partner is not mentioned in the partnership deed or which is against partnership deed such remuneration to any working partner is not allowed under section 40 subsection b third one payment of interest which is not authorized by or not in accordance with the partnership deed any interest payable to partners which is not included in partnership deed is not allowed and fourth point is remuneration to a working partner in accordance with the partnership deed for the prior period to the date of such authorization any payment of uh, remuneration prior to the construction of partnership deed is not allowed under section 40 subsection b that is payment of remuneration before preparing the partnership deed is not allowed that is remuneration to a working partner is considered under section uh, 40 subsection b only after the date of uh, construction of partnership deed that is authorized date Next fifth point is payment of interest on above circumstances that is prior to authorization that is same as a remuneration same as your fourth point that is payment of interest to partners prior to the date of such authorization is not allowed under section 40 subsection b. Next point is payment of interest on capital or loan by and in accordance with partnership deed relating to the period subsequent to the deed to any partner exceeding 12 percent per annum interest paid to a person before becoming a partner is fully allowed that means any interest on capital or any interest on loan exceeding 12 percent is not allowed for uh, section 40 subsection b if the interest is below 12 percent or if the interest is 12 percent then only they consider this uh, interest on capital or loan under section 40 subsection b if that exceeds the limit they cannot consider and interest paid to a person before becoming a partner is fully allowed because he is outsider he is not a partner next point is payment of remuneration to any working partner exceeding the specified limit is disallowed here specified limit means if the book profit is negative that means if there is any uh, book loss to a firm the 
permissible limit of remuneration is 150000 if the book profit is positive that is if there is any book profit the permissible remuneration is 90% of book profit or 150000 rupees whichever is more that is whichever is higher and on balance of book profit 60% can be allowed for a deduction that is under section 40 subsection B. So, this is about a specified limit of a remuneration if the book profit is negative uh, up to 150,000 is allowed if the book profit is positive 90% of book profit or 150,000 whichever is more uh, should be considered and on balance of book profit 60% is allowed as a remuneration under section 40 subsection B. This is about computation of firm's income. Next let us uh, see the performa of computation of book profit that is the format of computation of book profit. See the format. 3 columns you have to draw particulars and 2 amounts column. First one net profit as per profit and loss account you have to write the amount in the second amount column that is net profit as per profit and loss account given in the problem. Profit and loss account they will give in the problem and the net profit given in that problem you have to write first. To that you have to add 3 things. First one inadmissible item not covered under section 30 to 44 D that is any disallowed items which is included sorry which is not included must be added to this net profit as per profit and loss account. Next remuneration to partners if debited to profit and loss account any remuneration to the partners here you have to add that thing and this allowance of interest in excess of 12 percent per annum. Any interest which is more than 12 percent per annum should be included here. Here you have add that thing to the net profit because these are the disallowed items uh, which should be included in the profit and loss account which is actually a part of your profit and that, that items are not included yet. You have to include that thing to your partner that will increase the profit amount. The total of that you have to write in the second amount column. From that you have to deduct two things that is admissible items which are disallowed in profit and loss account and income from all other sources credited to profit and loss account. These are the items which should be included but it is not included yet. You have to lay, deduct that thing here. You get book profit when you do these adjustments. Next to see performer of computation of total income of a firm, 3 columns particulars and 2 amounts column, book for profit already you calculated you have to write that thing. From that you have to deduct remuneration paid to working partners, least of the following you have to consider as remuneration paid that is actual remuneration or statutory limit under section 40 subsection B that we studied that is a specified limit. Uh, whichever is more you have to consider that we studied here see this one this one statutory limit that you have to consider the total you have to write that is uh, whichever is uh, least you have to write in the second amount column. You get profit and gains from business and profession of the firm. To that you have to add income from all other sources to get gross total income that is other incomes, other heads of income you have to write here you get gross total income. 
from that you have to deduct deduction under section 80c to 80u that we already discussed you get total income from that total income you have to deduct tax liability of the firm and the balance is the income which should be distributed among the partners so this is the calculation of your book profit and tax liability and share of profit of partners in the next session onwards let us solve problems relating to assessment of firms thank you